Welcome to this video about exponential decay. Let's first have a look at linear decay. Suppose that we have $70 in a bank account. After one year, we withdraw $5 from the bank account. And then we do it again after another year. And again and so forth. We can see this as discrete linear decay of the money over time. The following line can be seen as continuous linear decay. Because the money decreases continuously, which can be seen as we remove a tiny amount of money every second. We'll now have a look at exponential decay. Same as before, we start with $70, but this time we instead withdraw 20% of the amount we currently have in our bank account. This means that we will take out $14 from the account and that we are left with $56. Next year we take out 20% again, but since we take 20% from $56, we now only remove $11.20. We then continue to reduce the amount by 20% each year. Note that since we remove just a proportion every year, we will approach zero, but the money on the count will never be exactly zero. From the previous lecture about exponential growth, we know that this equation can be used to calculate the amount of money for a certain year. To model exponential decay, we simply put a minus sign in front of R. R is here the discrete exponential decay rate, which is the proportion that is removed each time step. In our example, r is equal to 0 0.2, which means that the money decreases by 20% each year. Suppose that we like to know how much money we have in the count after 10 years. Then we set y0 to 70, because we start with $70. r to 0 0.2, because we take out 20% each year and t to 10, because we like to know how much money we have after 10 years. If we do the math, we see that we have about $7.50 on the count after 10 years. Note that this is discrete or stepwise exponential decay, because the amount of money decreases at a certain time point every year. If there will be a continuous decay, then the money would decrease continuously. We can think of this as we remove a tiny proportion each second from the bank account. Similar to what we discussed in the video about exponential growth, we can use the following equation to describe exponential decay, where we now have a minus sign in front of k. Remember that E is the Euler's number, and that k which is the continuous exponential decay rate, can be calculated like this if we happen to know the discrete exponential decay rate, r. This can be seen if we set these two equations equal to each other and solve for k. Also, remember that k is approximately equal to r for small values, which means that we can interpret k as the proportion we remove each time step. A common example of exponential decay is the decay of drugs in our bodies. If you take a drug, millions of drug molecules will reach your blood. Suppose that this crossroad represents a kidney or a liver. Molecules that go this way can be seen as they are excreted from the blood through the kidneys or degraded by the enzymes in the liver. Over time, the drug molecules will therefore leave the blood continuously. Once most of the molecules have left the body, there will be quite few left in the blood. The degradation or excretion is therefore working much slower because fewer molecules pass this crossroad. Since the degradation or excretion occurs continuously, 
we can use the following equation to describe exponential decay of a drug. Suppose that we initially have injected 400 mg of the drug in our bloodstream. The continuous exponential decay rate of the drug is here 0.01 per minute, which means that approximately 1% of the molecules leave the body every minute. For example, if we calculate the amount of drug in the body over a range of different time points, we can generate the following curve. For example, if we set t to 100, we see that there is about 147 mg of the drug left in the body. This corresponds to the value of the curve at 100 minutes. We see that after about 400 minutes, most of the drug molecules have left the body, which means that the drug has barely any effect at this time point. We'll now see how we can find the half-life of the drug. We started with 400 mg, and half of 400 is 200. We therefore draw a horizontal line from 200 until we hit the blue curve. And then we draw a vertical line from the curve to the x-axis. We see that the time point when half of the drug is left in the body is about 69 minutes. The half-life of the drug is therefore 69 minutes. We will now see how we can calculate the same thing with this equation. Since we like to calculate the time when the amount of drug is half of the initial amount. We set the left hand side equal to 200 because that is half of 400. We will now solve this equation for t. We therefore divide both sides by 400. Then we take the natural log of both sides and simplify the right hand side. We now solve this equation for t. If you do the math, we see that the half life is about 69 minutes. Note that this equation will give the exact same result as this equation. The following equation is therefore usually used to calculate the half-life, where k is the continuous exponential decay rate. Now, suppose you drink a cup of coffee that contains about 100 mg of caffeine. We can see this as millions of caffeine molecules enter our blood. Caffeine has a half-life of about 5 hours. So, how much caffeine do we have left in the body after 8 hours? To calculate this, we first need to solve this equation for k. Like this. Then we plug in the half-life. And do the math. Note that this is the continuous decay rate. To calculate the corresponding discrete decay rate, we can use the following formula that we discussed earlier. And solve for R, which is the discrete decay rate. Then we plug in the value of K and do the math. This value tells us that about 12.9% of the caffeine molecules are eliminated every hour. Remember that for small values, the continuous and discrete exponential decay rates are similar. Once we have worked out the continuous exponential decay rate, we can use this formula to calculate how much caffeine that is left in the body after 8 hours. We plug in 100 as the initial amount, the value of K, and the fact that we like to calculate the amount of caffeine after 8 hours. If we do the math, we see that we still have about 33 mg of caffeine left in the body after 8 hours. If we plot how the amount of caffeine changes in the body over time, we see that there are quite high levels even after about 15 hours. This might explain why some people have problems falling asleep if they drink coffee in the evening. This was the end of this lecture about exponential decay. In the next video, We'll have a look at the basics of ordinary differential equations. Thanks for watching.